Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy and welcome to this PHP tutorial on form validation. Now, if you have a website that takes in form data from a user, it's obviously very important to validate each aspect of your form. Now, if you have a long form such as a registration form or even a short form such as just a login form, you're going to want to validate the data that's input in order to process the form correctly and ensure that anything you may be storing or using uh, is uh, processed correctly. Now there are a few problems with this. The first one is if you are just using an if block, so for example you were to say if and a condition and then else if a condition and then you can carry on and say else if condition and finally you could say else and this might be complete registration. Now in this example we use several else's inside an if, inside an if statement, so we use um, an if else if statement. However there is a problem with this, you can't show multiple errors at the same time. Now the technique I'm going to show you uses an array to hold a list of errors that have been accumulated once the user has pressed a submit form or submit button on a form. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a form which is going to submit back to this page. So we're going to create a form with the action, well we'll change that in a moment. We're going to set the method to post and just end our form there. Now the action we're going to be submitting back to index.php so we can just choose index.php here. Inside of here we're going to be creating our form elements, so our form fields. We're going to say, uh, let's say name and we'll create an input type with text, the name being uh, name, and that should be okay. Let's break down, uh, in fact we'll break down here as well just to make everything look a bit neater. And we can say age for example. Now you wouldn't usually store an age as an integer, you'd store a date of birth, but I'm just using this uh, as an example. I'm going to set the size to 3 just because the form uh, field needs to be a bit smaller for this or, or usually will be a bit a bit smaller. So we've got name, age, we can also then say email. Let's break down again and create an input type of text and we'll leave that as it is. Uh, let's also give these to a name. So that name is age and this name is email. Let's also, well, we'll do one more just to keep the tutorial as uh, short as possible. Name, age, email, and let's think something else that might need to be validated. Uh, in fact, let's just keep it at that. Okay, so um, let's go down here now and create our uh, submit button. Let's just wrap these in paragraph tags here. And our submit button is just going to look like this. So input type, submit, and value register for example. Okay so let's go over to our page and refresh and we can see that we've got name, age and email here with the option to click register which will refresh our page and submit our data. So you should by now already know how to actually uh, submit forms and how to pick up with post variables uh, so I'm assuming you already know that. Uh, in this case what we're going to do is we're going to just create a slight a quick check up here to say if is set dollar underscore post name. Uh, this here corresponds to this variable here. We're going to use a comma separated value because we can use more than one post or, or other variable inside is set. Dollar underscore post age and then we're going to say dollar underscore post email. Okay. So if those are set we can continue processing uh, our validation. So I'm just going to say echo OK so we know that our form has been submitted. Let's click register and we can see that it says OK regardless of what we type in here. So now we've come to the point where we actually need to validate our user input. So how can we go about this? Well like I said earlier in the tutorial we're going to be using an array to hold the uh, error messages that we've accumulated along this process. So I'm going to create a variable called errors and this is just going to be equal to array. Okay, So array, uh, two parentheses here but empty. So we've got an empty array. Now just here, we're going to create um, a few if statements uh, underneath each other, which are going to check each element of this uh, form. 
So the first if statement is going to check name, then age, then email. Then down here, we're going to create a check to see if we've actually created any errors for ourselves. If we have created any errors, we're going to output them. Otherwise, we're going to continue with the process. For example, you may want to go ahead and register your user, or if this was something different, go ahead and carry out the process that you intend to. So let's just get rid of these. So let's go ahead and start creating our if statement. I'm going to create an empty block there. Um, we'll continue with the rest in a moment. So if um, name, or let's say if strlen name is uh, less than uh, 25, um, or let's say greater than 25, and we can say errors, and then we need two square parentheses because we're adding an element to an array, and this element is going to be string data. Name is too long, okay? So, essentially, the reason we would do something like this is if we were storing um, this name value in a database and we had a, a var char of 25, so a variable character of 25, you're not going to want to allow the user to input a name that's more than 25 characters because you'll have the data cut off at the end. If the user was to type in a name that was greater than 25, you would have the end of it cut off. So we're going to check this. Um, now down here we can say if, uh, let's say, is numeric age and we want to wait, make one change to this and that is not. So if the age is not numeric, i.e. it is not a number, we're going to say errors and again we're appending a, a value, sorry that's a single equals, we're appending a value to this errors array and that is going to be age must be a number. Okay, but what we also might need to check is if the age is um, equal to zero or not. So we can come down and say if, um, in fact we can say else if age is equal to zero. In fact no, we could change this again and we could say if age is less than or equal to zero errors equals age must be positive. So essentially you're doing all the checks that you would normally do, however you're just uh, adding them to this errors array. And what this is doing is it's accumulating uh, the record, if you like, or um, elements of this array, and then later we can do what we want with them. So we'll do the last check, and that is email address. So let's go ahead and create an email check. We'll say if filter var email, and then we say filter valid email. That's just a tip for you if you wanted some easy uh, email validation. And if that is equal to false, then we know we have a incorrect email address. So errors equals please enter a valid email address. Okay, so now that we've done this, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, run our script. If I click register, uh, you can see that we've got, oh, undefined variable name. Okay, yeah, that's because we haven't actually created them. So these variables here, name, age, and down here, email, uh, we need to actually take from this data. I completely forgot to do that. So let's say name equals dollar underscore post name. Age equals dollar underscore post age. And email equals dollar underscore post email. So let's go ahead and refresh this page. Uh, filter valid, validate email, that should be. Okay, so if we click register now, you can see that nothing's happening. Um, our error uh, errors array actually will contain the appropriate uh, error messages that we've applied here. So let's go ahead and use print R on this errors array. 